The unique crossover fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou has captured the attention of both boxing and MMA worlds. Ngannou is the former UFC heavyweight king who recently transitioned into boxing and gave Tyson Fury all he could handle last year. Meanwhile, Joshua is looking to regain his footing in the division after losing his belts. He's won three straight fights since the back-to-back -back losses trying to earn another title shot. Recently, former cruiserweight world champion Johnny Nelson had some intriguing warnings for Joshua about the dangers Niganu presents on the inside fighting. We are going to break those down along with my prediction on how I see this fight playing out. So cruiserweight legend Johnny Nelson has been around boxing a very long time both as a fighter and commentator. He knows what he's looking at when breaking down matchups. Nelson warned Joshua that Nganu's best work comes fighting on the inside offensively, where he uses MMA tactics like clinching, leaning, and mauling to wear opponents down. This contrasts with typical boxers who operate best at range using footwork and boxing techniques. Here's what Nelson had to say about the upcoming blockbuster matchup. Where Nganu is coming from, MMA. He's used to getting up close and personal, fighting on the inside, his best work is on the inside. If you're boxing, you've got to box long. You've got to use the jab. He'll be a better inside fighter than Anthony Joshua. He has the strength to maul, to hold, to grab, to push. If you underestimate him and let him get in close, that's the problem because if you get greedy, he can take a shot. I would not be surprised at all if Anthony Joshua thinks, I'm going to stay in the pocket and knock you out. Here's another shocking statement made by Nelson about the potential outcome of this match. Anthony Joshua loses somehow to Ngannou. That's it. Credibility is gone. Career is in tatters. It's a lot of rebuilding. How is he ever going to get his head around losing to Ngannou? So the risk is far too high. Why would you? Why would you? This guy's had one fight. You've got no excuse to lose to this guy. He's had one professional boxing match. So if you lose to him, any excuse, whatever you've done, everything, all the Olympics, all the success, be two-time world heavyweight champion, you, it's all gone. It's all gone up in smoke because that's what you remember. You remember you lost to a guy that's had, had one previous fight to you. So basically, Nelson believes Ngannou wants to make things ugly, messy, and draining for Joshua by constantly grappling him on the inside all his MMA days. Also, this time, the stakes are higher than ever. If Joshua foolishly obliges him in those close quarters trades trying to seek a highlight reel knockout, he'll likely fall into Nunganu's wheelhouse and traps. Instead, Nelson advises Joshua to stick to an outside boxing game centered around his jab and footwork. Don't try matching strength or inside fighting prowess with the Predator. Keep the fight at a distance using angles and stay tactical for all 12 rounds if needed rather than get greedy. All right, let's quickly analyze Joshua's game overall so we understand the strengths Nelson wants him to leverage. The former unified heavyweight champion stands 6'6 six six inches with an 83-inch reach and sculpted 240 pounds frame. Joshua remains one of boxing's premier physical specimens even at 33 years old now. After winning Olympic gold for the UK back in 2012, Joshua tore through the pro ranks going 22-0 with 21 knockouts. He defeated names like Vladimir Klitschko, Joseph Parker, and Alexander Povetkin to become unified champions. AJ combined his Adonis physique and crushing power with solid fundamental boxing ability. Working behind a piston jab, he kept most opponents at the end of his punches. If they did try coming inside, Joshua showed underrated inside fighting savvy with nasty uppercuts and hooks. However, all-time great Vladimir Klitschko exposed some vulnerabilities in Joshua mentally and defensively. Joshua has also struggled badly with boxers who use angles, feints, and lateral movement to disrupt his rhythm. He suffered shocking upset defeats to Andy Ruiz Jr. and Oleksandr Usyk in this manner. Both men offset Joshua's power by staying in near-constant motion and refusing to give him a stationary target. 
This also exhausted Joshua, who fades down the stretch. Against Nganu, Joshua will possess physical tools the Predator hasn't seen before in boxing. The questions surround whether AJ's mental confidence can hold up, along with his pace and durability, if Nganu drags him into deep waters. As for Francis Nganu, his story is well known by now. The former homeless youth found his salvation through MMA after being jailed for immigration issues. Nganu used the sport as an escape from crushing poverty. Thanks to otherworldly athletic gifts and frightening power, the Predator quickly rose up the UFC heavyweight ranks. His terrifying knockouts made him an instant fan favorite. At 6'4 inches and 270 pounds of purely chiseled muscle, Nganu obtained almost superhero status with his mythical strength and punching power. Just one clean shot from Nganu can rearrange molecules. After losing his UFC belt earlier this year, Nganu embarked on an unexpected transition into boxing under the Tyson Fury model. He immediately set sights on boxing's elite. In only his pro debut, Nganu exceeded all expectations by dropping Fury for the first official knockdown of his career. The Predator swung with reckless abandon early on, clearly rattling Fury several times despite losing a decision. Against Joshua, Nganu will set an alarming pace from the opening bell stalking forward behind heavy artillery. He only needs one opening to end Joshua's night violently. The question is, can Nganu take sustained punishment from a gifted puncher like Joshua after the adrenaline wears off and he starts tiring? We know Nganu possesses a proven iron chin in MMA, but boxing is an entirely different animal. All right, taking all the above into consideration, along with Johnny Nelson's astute warnings, here are the strategies I believe Joshua must follow to get his hand raised. Number one, establish the jab early and often. Flick it out constantly to disrupt Nganu's rhythm and gauge distance for the straight right down the middle. Number two, use lateral movement and angles relentlessly. Never stay stationary in front of Nganu without pivoting off after combinations. Keep him turning and resetting his feet so he cannot launch more power. Number three, fight tall behind the left shoulder high guard. Take away Nganu's vision and counter over the top when he lunges recklessly out of frustration. Protect the chin at all costs. Number four, whenever tied up inside, immediately create separation with short hooks before re-establishing range. Do not linger stationary trading blows up close or let him lean weight on you. Number five, apply steady calculated pressure behind the jab as Nganu tires. Look to increase the work rate round by round without chasing knockouts until the later championship rounds. Then sit down more on power shots. If Joshua fights an intelligent, disciplined fight using his footwork and technique advantages, I believe he can tame Nganu through 12 rounds for a comfortable decision or late stoppage once the MMA fighter's gas runs empty. As for Nganu, he has the opportunity to shock the boxing world by defeating a legend like Anthony Joshua. However, here are the strategies he must follow to make this happen. Number one, apply ruthless, overwhelming pressure from the first bell behind looping power shots. Look to bully Joshua and back him up while preventing him from ever settling down behind the jab. Number two, attack the body and legs early with thudding hooks. Joshua has shown susceptibility to attrition fights before as he tires. Sap some of his power and mobility. Number three, get inside behind the double jab and unload savage combinations. Force Joshua into exchanges along the ropes or corners where mobility is limited and his punch resistance can be further tested. Number four, use MMA tactics like leaning, clinching, and wrestling whenever possible to wear on Joshua mentally and physically. Make it an exhausting inside dogfight once stamina becomes a factor. If Nganu can walk Joshua down while taking his best return fire, I think he has a shot at landing something catastrophic later on the tiring Joshua. But it will require likely walking through hell for minutes at a time first. Well, despite Nganu's visible one-punch stopping power, I am siding with Anthony Joshua via a hard-fought 12-round unanimous decision when these titans collide on March 8th. I expect Nganu to enjoy early success bullying forward as Joshua struggles with the pressure and copious power being flung his way. The Predator knows just one clean shot could dramatically turn the fight, 
so I see him taking risks others wouldn't dare to try to land bombs. Ultimately, I foresee Joshua's boxing skill, footwork, and resilience shining through as Nganu begins tiring from the pace and accumulating punishment starting around rounds 5, 6. Joshua starts timing his lethal counters better while using angles to avoid the rushing Nganu along the ropes. In the decisive rounds, we expect Joshua to get aggressive against a fatigued Nganu who simply hasn't experienced this kind of prolonged warfare before. Joshua batters him up and down for consecutive rounds while barely taking any fire in return late. By the final bell, Nganu is a depleted, beaten man, barely on his feet, while Joshua raises his arms in victory overcoming yet another critical test in his career. So I believe that despite Nganu's dominance, Anthony Joshua will be able to emerge victorious in this match, but not by a huge margin. That was my breakdown for the heavyweight superfight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Nganu. Let me know who you are picking and why down below. Smash that like button, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and press the bell icon to never miss an update from our channel. Until next time, folks.